and uh, it's called it's called Victory is Mine, and I want to talk today on your identity as a victor. And I want to begin the series with this incredible thought. Okay, this is I don't know who to credit this uh, statement to, but I've heard Jeff Williams say it several times. And this is what he says, if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're right. Am I right on that? Now that's not in the Bible, but it is absolutely true. It is what we believe about ourselves that determines where we go, what we become, and who we are. And so I found a great uh, quote today, a story about George Foreman. How many of you remember him? He was a heavyweight boxing champion of the world. In fact, two different times he became the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. Uh, did you know that he's now pastoring a church in Houston? I'm glad you already have a church here in Houston. But uh, we're grateful that he's doing that. But at age 45, he became the oldest man in the world to ever win the heavyweight title. And in his book, God in My Corner, this is what he writes. This is what he writes, and I'm quoting George Foreman. He said, When I climbed in the ring during my comeback, the announcers often introduced me as the heavyweight champion of the world. As they introduced me, I'd mumble to myself, and the next heavyweight champion of the world. So every time he got in the ring ready to fight, he would remind himself of his identity. He was saying, I'm going to be a champion. I'm going to be a victor. And later he write, he goes on to say this, how could I ever win the title if I didn't believe that I could? Now I want you to understand this this morning, that every one of us acts out of our identity. All right, we act out of our identity. That's why we've got to be willing to adopt the incredible new identity that's given to us in Jesus Christ in the Word of God. How many of you believe that when a person becomes a Christian, God gives them a new identity? Amen? Uh, this is a really a, the powerful underlying truth for this entire series. And so I want to begin with this thought today. Number one, your victory and your identity come because of a relationship to Jesus Christ. Listen, the very moment you got saved, you became a victor in God's eyes. Amen? You may not have felt it. You may not have ever walked in it. You may say, I haven't seen it very much in my life. But I want you to understand that when you give your life to Jesus, He puts you in a process that transforms you more into His image. I believe that with all of my heart. He's giving you a new identity. And the truth is this, as your relationship with Jesus Christ grows, the more you will be able to accept the idea that victory is possible and victory is yours and that you are a victor. Now, as we get kind of a little bit deeper into this series, we're going to uh, understand that just because you have the identity of a victor in a, in a Christian sense, in a spiritual sense, that doesn't mean that you're always going to be a victor in a worldly sense. I think that uh, the Christendom has taken uh, some of the truths of the Bible and they've stretched them a little bit too far. Victory doesn't always mean that you'll be very, very wealthy in financial goods. How many of you realize that some of the most poor people in the world are the greatest victors in Jesus Christ, right? I'm talking today about the Syrian refugees, Christian refugees, who everything they've had has been confiscated from them. They're homes, their lands, everything that they have. But how many of you think they're victors in Jesus? Come on. 
Amen. That doesn't mean that you're going to be problem free in life. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful to be problem free? But listen, the very existence of problems and obstacles and difficulties in your life causes you to become a victor. As we get into this series, you're going to discover as well that victory doesn't depend upon how you feel. You may not feel like a victor. You may not feel like you have victory. But I'm going to tell you, you have victory because the Word of God tells you that you have victory. You say, well, 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 how's this all work? Here's the thing. At the end of your life, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And Jesus is going to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. And at that moment, you'll be able to look back across your life and you'll be able to see the many things that you were victorious over, the things you conquered. I'm talking today about temptations and discouragements and heartaches and sorrows, the flesh, the devil, the world system. Oh, come on. Is there anybody here that says, I want to be a victor in Jesus. I want His victory to be so part of me that it becomes my identity in the Lord. And I'll tell you, without Jesus, you'll never have victory. You've got to have Christ in your life. You cannot do it alone. But the good news is this today. With Him, you can have victory. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 says this. I love this verse. It says, in all these things, we are what? More than conquerors. How? Through Him who loved us. I I want you to take note how our victory is tied to Jesus Christ, right? It's through Him. It's because of Him. We're dependent upon Him to be victorious. Uh, To conquer is to be victorious. To be more than a conqueror means that not only do we achieve victory, but we are overwhelmingly victorious. The final score of a basketball game is 142 to 6. We know that the opposition put up a very small fight. And we know that, that, that the, the winning team, was that was beyond the scope of a regular victory. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. And I love these powerful words. I love these words in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and, 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 and 3. There are seven letters that Jesus wrote to the seven churches, right? And there are seven promises that, 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 that begin like this. And I'm not going to read all the promises. But each one says, To him who overcomes, or he that overcomes. Seven times in the book of Revelation, it talks about being an overcomer. An overcomer is a victory. Now, I, I don't believe that that's a victory for just a select few. I believe that's for every single one of us today. How many of you believe that? That's for all of us today. You know, Jesus is not a carrot dangler. How many know what a carrot dangler is? You've all seen the picture of the mule and the carrots out there. And no matter how hard, how fast that little mule's running, he's never going to get that carrot. No, sir, that's not the Jesus we serve. He, He said, listen, there's a reward at the end of this thing. What he's saying is you can get the carrot. Hello? He's saying it can be yours. Come on, is there anybody that says, I want to be a victor? Let me tell you, there's a powerful scripture that says this. Thanks be unto God who gives gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Come on. Every one of us can be victorious. Now you can't be victorious and lukewarm. You can't be victorious and follow from afar. You can't be victorious if you don't know the Word. Hello? You can't be victorious if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit guide you and direct you. But over and over again in Scripture, God pictures us as winning, but that's always tied to our relationship with God. Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things, right? But how can we do all things? It's through Christ who strengthens us. I love John 15 and verse 4. It says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. 
neither can you unless it abides in me. Let me tell you something. If you want to be fruitful, if you want to be victorious, if you want to live a life that pleases God, you've got to be like a branch to a vine. Come on. You've got to cling right to it. Hello. You can't be separated from it because the Word says this, He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing. Come on. I got a feeling that there's some people in this house today that you're saying in your spirit, I'm going to stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to, I'm going to abide in him. Amen. And we're learning here. I'm uh, going to learn in this uh, this series that we are the sheep of his pasture. Come on. We can do what he says we can do. We are who he says that we are. And one day we're going to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. But I've got news for you today. That's going to be glorious. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know what that all entails, but I'm going to tell you that our victory is not somewhere out there in the future. Hello? Our victory is today. Our victory is right now. You carry His authority today. You are His ambassador uh, today. Come on. We are salt. We are light right now. Come on. If you know Jesus, you need to have an identity as a victor. Come on. Give the Lord a hand of praise today. And it is as you accept that identity that God will lead you to victory. Whenever I think of the word identity in the Christian context, I have to go back to the Old Testament story of Gideon. Gideon. 